Captain America the First Avenger. Yes, Captain America. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, uh, our, as, as, as our world soldier, as he is getting ready to be known, they're taking America off of Captain America. Are you serious? Actually, they did that in some of the other countries. That was what they're doing here, too, because a lot, uh, like a lot, okay, here's the trick, kids. Marvel, Marvel Comics and DC Comics are actually the, the same company, even though they're not, they're sort of convoluted organization. But have you noticed all the crossovers in your DC Comics and your Marvel Comics? Mm. Yeah. But, um, the, uh, the people doing comic books today are decidedly anti-American. Yeah, but part of it is, is you don't change a, a comic book character's name when it comes to the big screen. They did, and it pissed off the people at Disney. I mean, Disney now owns Marvel, and Disney was not pleased about the changing of the name to uh, the World Soldier. Mm -hmm. Because when you say Captain World Soldier, who under, who knows who well, that see, is? Well, see, part of it is the reason to recreate a comic book is you bring the fans with you. Oh, I know. If you change the name, yeah, then okay. people don't know about it. Okay. Here's sort of a unique perspective. Last night I was watching the 1990 version uh, uh, of the ver of this movie. I mean, this was definitely they, they borrowed literally from the first movie, folks. And um, you know, and you know, and the first movie bombed. I think it had uh, J. L. Salinger's son. Was the star of the movie, which I knew. I, I actually met the guy. The guy, huge person. He actually was. Uh, we're talking five inches taller than Chris Evans. Wow. Yeah, big man, big man. I mean, this guy is just you know, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was young. Because he plays sort of strong. He plays you know, normal six foot five inch people now. But, well, go ahead. But no, but um, here's the trick. The people are going to think, boy, that was really fantastic effects. Chris Evans and then the scrawny guy. Uh, the playing Chris Evans at the beginning of the movie, playing Captain America at the beginning of the movie, that was Chris Evans. Well, because at first we thought, well, did they just change the head? Because yeah. there was a pretty dramatic change. So he yeah. went from, what, 140 pounds? He, to went from, well, he went from 140 pounds to 190 pounds. That's a huge difference. Yeah, and uh, and no matter what you might think, here's the trick is, they put all, uh, the, okay, Hugo Weaving was to me the big surprise in the movie. This guy's a big man. Certainly they padded well, his clothes, but Hugo, he is a big man. You've seen him in Matrix before. Yeah, and but, which is the but he was sort of, he was sort of the uh, Canoe Reeves big, but now he is, I mean, you can tell by his face. Well, do you think it's all perspective? Because first, first of all, I don't know how tall Keanu Reeves is. At uh, six three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because see, part of it is, is I thought, okay, first, first of all, Captain America with Chris Evans, six foot tall. Usually, you always think of most of the superheroes as bigger, bigger than that. Yeah. I mean, my first. Um, I, I, I guess is, I know how he got the role. He was willing to do the balance. He was willing. That's to, a huge balance. He was uh, according to what I said. He was one hundred and sixty-five pounds. Chris Evans. Is, he only got. He put the muscle on a little bit to play. Um, uh, and you know, he played. Um, you know, you know Johnny in the um, Fantastic Four movies. But, yeah, um, remember the Silver Surfer Fantastic Four? Yeah, yeah the first Fantastic Four, too. But, um, but he uh, basically was a 165 pound person. See, he's, he's, he's not about, he's just a little bigger than I am. Actually, I outweigh him by, I got to outweigh him by 60 pounds more weight. You know, and I'm not considered to be muscular. I, I, you know, but he, he, he was probably willing to go down where most of the actors don't like. I mean, um, Christian Bell didn't get an Academy Award. Well, then, part of it, it that's a lot of difference in weight. Yeah. First to lose 25 and then to gain, what, 50 then, pounds back? Yeah, go up to 195, so. But if you notice, so it, it, he's, he's big in the uh, Red Brown big, which means Red Brown was solid. But, but, you know, that's what he is. I mean, you really couldn't tell amongst all the other actors that he was that beefy because mm -hmm. they were all big men. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Neil O'Donnell was bigger than he was. Well, your first clue was when they all start coming back after they had been oh, cast. God, they right? an awful lot of I looked men. at him, I'm like, he's not that much bigger than the other ones. Yeah, so, but he wasn't, actually, he wasn't that much bigger than Tommy Lee Jones, who was but a little overweight. But it gave you some perspective as to why the character was chosen, because he was like a smart guy. Now, part of it is our perspective is a little unique, because you've grown up with comics. Yeah. And, you, and you've seen, well... Well, I know, that, uh, I know that what happened was, is that Marvel Universe is built around Captain America. Everything evolves from Captain America. Make sure you watch it, the ending past the credits. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, here's a unique thing. The opening of the movie was put at the tail end, which I've never seen before. Yeah, because, yeah. So they, they stuck it in, you know. The, I'm like, boy, they usually don't do well, that. Well, here they did. I thought, oh, gee whiz, they finally got 3D effects at the end of the movie. No, it was the opening of the film. It's like the, the end of the film. And then after that was done, they went to the credits, which were all crappy, no matter what glasses you If you took your glasses off, they were bad. If you put them on, they were bad. But they were a little bit better with the glasses on. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the um, from my technical side, basically, you know, I, my biggest gripe about 3D is they don't actually use 3D equipment to shoot 3D. Anyway. There's not a 3D camera mentioned again on that thing. 
Well, you know, part of it is a lot of times when you're watching 3D, some things are very obvious when things are coming at you. It was filmed specifically for 3D, yeah. right? Okay. And you know, you know yeah, it is. They knew right? they were okay. The movie. They also do those things in 2D. The movie is conversion. And it's kind of obvious because you're sitting there watching. It's like, oh, there's a few things where they're panning through it, but there was no obvious setup 3D shots. Well, I know. It's just them. Um, uh, that I can that I can remember. Yeah. Anyway. What happens is they they always meant it to be 3D, but they meant okay. Uh, here's a, before we continue our thing, our review. But uh, actually, we are wearing our Captain America glasses. We actually we went to the theater two hours early to get these glasses. Yeah, these are special edition 3D yeah. glasses, and I swear they're better than the regular ones. Yeah. It seems that we've seen when we pick up the special edition. Uh, glasses, and they seem to put a little bit more effort into the special edition glasses than they do the ones that are going to be you know, used over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But um, um, uh, you can tell whether a true 3D camera has been used or it's back-ended by virtue of the fact that you can't zoom in and out in a true 3D camera. It's all it's all depth of field. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like we've done it before, I can stand back here and I'm just as in focus as not a straight chick is there. Mm -hmm. And when I move up, you don't have to worry. The focus is still there. But on um, they do infuriating zooms. In 3D, and they also can't understand that in, in with a 3D camera you can't do panning quick. It basically will tell you it will stop filming if you do it too quick. Well, you know, sometimes we can watch the movies and we can, you can say, okay, that was cut for 2D, and then well, they cut the movie and then they converted it for 3D. Yeah. Versus this they was, planned it for 3D, they shot it in 3D, or um, they cut it for 3D and then made it. Well, this, there, there is a difference. They said this was from beginning to end was meant to be done in 3D, but what happens is. Uh, 3D lends itself best to action movies and sci-fi and fantasy. I think so. And so you basically, if you just write the script for those, you know you have enough material in it. So they, okay, they're going to redo the Lord of the Rings things in 3D. And they I, I all work in 3D. They, they, and I can, see where, I can see where Star Wars Yeah, we'll work. work in 3D. Mm -hmm. But um, the tech, I mean, okay, the, the, the screeners are showing people are dark, are really dark, compared to the movie, which was actually a lot brighter than what you thought. It was still a dark thing because it was supposedly set during World War II. But, uh, you know, I, technically it was just, they, they overdid the sound, the mood, mood, uh, mood music was there, but mostly the mood music was like, you know, like period pieces, period pieces of you know. music, you know, and... Um, but, you know, I, I kind of felt, just can we get to the end? Or, well, okay, we're well, yeah, we to the end right now. No, but part of it is, is okay, as a viewer, see, because you, he, you view more of the technical aspects, I view it more from the pure entertainment perspective. Yeah. Um, I felt the end was unsatisfying. Yeah. And part of it, I'm going like, did they do that in the comic book? No. Okay. Well, okay, what happened is, is that you always piss off. I mean, I can imagine that the Comic Con will have the purists there, and I got to say, um, didn't Captain America come back 50 years ago? And all the people that he served with in that movie were still basically young people. You know, they were all in their 40s and 50s. And by the time he comes back, they're all ready to die. And I know he's. They're all ready to die then. So. Well, and part. Of, Here's part. Okay, we're yeah, assuming. They did so. Actually, too, and then they, they also they politically corrected. They made Samuel L. Jackson the Nick Fury. Okay. Nick Fury. He was a white guy, folks. Well, see, part of it since you know the history of the comic books, it's like the French. Can we say this? Yeah. The French. Well, because in the in the comic book, the French survived. Yeah, I know. But Bucky was a little guy, not a big guy. Bucky was a little guy. Bucky came back late. And most people are quite No one dies in comic books. They bring them back. They always come back. They <coughs> bring them back. They bring them back. Bring them back. We also tell you that. That he could come back because it's a movie off of a comic well, book. I'm going to tell you that Hugo Weaving just disintegrated. A good time you see this, the movie's out, so I'm not giving anything away. But, um, yeah. He, he was basically the reason behind most of the Marvel stuff. He had the, the Red Skull. That's and, a big change. The Red Skull and Hydra have been fitting, fighting everybody across Marvel Universe. That's a big change to have him die in the movie. Yeah. Although, maybe he really didn't die because this is after the comic He just disintegrated and then helped, you know? Yeah. Yes. Like he falls down from the sky and rebuilt. And, and you, you saw the... You, you, you saw the power source and everything behind Iron Man's future. Mm -hmm. Dan, you know, you know I had, his father was also in the movie. It just happens to be a small version of... Um, Robert uh, Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. So my guess is they would have loved to have Downey, but the cost would have been too much. But... Uh, it's a, uh, if you want a good war movie, this is a really slam dang good war movie. But um, technically, technically it looks like a good war movie. 3D, it works in 3D because action works in 3D, but really, I mean... Well, you know, even though it was set during wartime and stuff, I just think of it more of an action movie. Yeah. It's not, you know like how a lot of times when you see war movies, they're like depressing? Well, the, the problem it is, wasn't. it's a war movie with 22nd century equipment. 
Oh, okay. That's why it looked like a sci-fi war movie. You know, basically, I'll guarantee you, it looks like something you would have seen, uh, uh, be, you know, like Corbin uh, Nimick starring in over on the um, Sci-Fi Channel. Corbin Nimick does the military stuff. Uh, most of the the um, the you know the other action stuff is done by. Um, and we got three actors that do a lot of stuff on the Sci-Fi Channel. We got Jack Ward, mm -hmm. um, uh, Lorenzo Lamas, and Corman Nimick. Corman Nimick tends to play the, the you know the soldier type parts, but Jack Ward plays the weird parts. And then all the other parts with the romantic type guys are all played by Lorenzo Lamas. But it looked like, I mean, I, I saw cheap ass all over it. How much did they spend on this movie? Do you remember? Probably. Um, I don't know what. A couple the, hundred million. That, no, I don't think it was that much. But I don't know how much, how much they did. But it seemed, um, it, you know, I, I'd have to check real quick. The miracle of television, miracle of computers. That's right. That's why we have it here. I know because you can get. I can get into this stuff real quick. Ah. Okay. Here I kind of talk grossing. Well, yeah. I can't hide it. Find a find, huh? Okay, man, I steal. Here we go. Blue Ridge Foreign Records. Well, yeah, but the Blue Ridge. Uh, production budget 140 million. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, I know where the 140 million came from. Where? Well, no, it's got to do with the fact that... Um, you got Tommy Lee Jones, you got Samuel Jackson in there for a little bit, and you got Hugo Weaving. Yeah, Hugo Weaving. No, but it came in... Okay, uh, it is... The problem is, is why you don't like doing historical things. You have to oh, round up everything to work with. There was a god-awful lot of old vehicles used in that thing. And you had to do set dressing in order to make everything look like it was from 1941. So um, that, that's the problem. And then the actors all, okay, they're trying to make the thing look like it's a 1940s thing, so the women beefed up a bit. You know, the women. Yeah, they didn't look like they needed to be fed. They no, were I more know. curvaceous. I know, I imagine they had to go lose that weight. But the, the, um, the money is in the, uh, like the modeling mm -hmm. and the uh, special effects and the, um, and the set work because the, um, you know, and then the asinine costumes that some of the people were wearing, folks. You know, like the guys got 1941 and they're wearing uniforms from 2011. Well, you know, with guns like, that would could only have come from 2011, never from. That's the, the futuristic part. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. fantasy part. Yeah, and then they had they they total you know technically they total lost um, they they total lost track of comparison. They have wheels on the. They have the wheels on the flying wing that they had at the end of the movie, which mm -hmm. is actually the beginning of the movie. Were a little bit bigger than Hugo Weaving when he walks by him. That means they're about six foot, maybe right. seven foot tall. Yeah. But we're talking. Uh, so the vehicle itself was not as big as you know. Um, it, it was not as big as a, you know as a as an ocean liner. Mm. But this thing was as big as a city, folks. I mean, this thing was massive. Oh, you mean that the... It the flying like, wing. It looked like a stealth. Yeah, and look, what, that's what they call a flying wing when oh. I was young. But they also put, uh, they also forgot, they put rocket engines on a prop plane. Oh. Which basically would have tore the rock and wing, you know, tore the uh, engines off the plane. You mean when it was shooting? Yeah, they're just all kinds of minor things. That well, that's they why all. they have technical people and historical it's, people. It, it's called... It's why my grandmother had worked for a long time as script supervisor. She would have noted the fact that when it's, when the person was standing near the wheel, that the perspective looked wrong. So you don't have the guy stand anywhere near the 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 mock-up that you're using. Yeah, because if you use the mock, you can't tell. I mean, yeah. So just, I mean, if they, if it's okay, look. I look. I am back, mm -hmm. and she and she, if she moves forward. Uh huh. See, as long as she doesn't stand and we don't stand together, you can't tell the size of something. Mm -hmm. but when you can, then you tell the size because, see, as it is, I always look smaller because I stand behind this back here and, I, and she stands forward. But um, I mean, she can tell you about the entertainment value of the thing. I went to my technical site again. You know what? As far as entertainment, it was fun. 
Yeah. Um, Stanley Tucci, I always love to see Actually, Stanley, Stanley Tucci. Actually, Stanley Tucci looked the youngest. If you if you got that beard off, he looked like he, he was looked, a guy in his 30s. He did. He looked great. Um, but he's he had, supposed to be in his, you know, an old man. But you can tell this guy, you know, he was in, Stanley Tucci was really in good shape. He was in really, yeah, he was in really good shape. Haley Atwell, who I haven't seen before, she was um, Peggy Carter. Yeah, let me see what she's done before. Thanks to the miracle of computers, um, and, you know, she's a musician, you know, there are a lot of people, okay, we can see she still had the weight on. But the Duchess, uh, the pillars, pillars of the, of the earth. earth. Oh, that's where she had her and the prisoner. I see. I remember that. But uh, okay, so she, she's been she, kind of in fantasy movies. Before. Yeah, the line of beauty. She's fantasy stuff, actually. Yeah. And she's she's got such a little resume. She's got nothing about her other than the fact that she's music. Yeah, well, she was. She's not that old. Well, actually, she's almost thirty. Huh? Yeah, but most so of she, she went to school and then went to acting. But if you look at the cast list, virtually everyone in his cast list, other than McDonald and so Mac, forth, uh, Neil McDougal, McDougal, Neil McDougal.